Hey guys, last episode I finished up a pair of ballast scissors using my old design, but I also said I want to make a pair of scissors using a new design I came up with. I've been looking for a shape that is able to lock the blades and handles together in one position, then accommodate a round section so the handles can spin, then lock the handles in place again after being rotated 178 degrees. The best thing I came up with was a lobed triangle in a kind of hexagonal torx looking shape. This works well, but I had concerns. When trying to cut the torque shape into the handles, I struggled to machine them in a way where the lobes of the pins could fit, but it didn't make the round section too loose. I'm worried the pads that the pins rotate against are so small that my machine isn't able to accurately machine them. Or maybe they're so small, even the small adjustments I make just end up destroying them completely. I was also worried that even if I could get a good fit with them, it wouldn't take much wear for them to become a bad fit. I felt really unsure what to do for a while. I've tried dozens and dozens of ideas for pin shapes and thought the Torx was as good as it gets, but I tried doodling again and somehow I came up with something better than I ever have. This new design has more contact in the locked position, and somehow also manages to have more contact in ballet mode too. I printed a model using this design, and it seemed to work in the real world. So let's make another pair of scissors and see if it works. I started by making pins. I used the same method of using drill bushings to size things accurately. I had trouble making pins in the past because I can't really measure the complex curves very easily. I realized I could measure the theoretical outside diameter with these bushings and assume that if that's correct then everything should be pretty accurate. Next I could make the handles. I made holes for the pins in the handles and they didn't fit. So I expanded the holes slightly and eventually the right gauge pin fit but my pins still couldn't. It's the same problem as before, which is good news and bad news. It means that my fears that my machine is just entirely chopping away the pads is incorrect. Bad news is I'm still confused what the problem is. Again, I thought maybe it's getting caught in the corners. I tried using Sharpie to see where it was getting stuck, but it looked like it was kind of touching everywhere. Finally, after spending some time actually trying to explain the problem aloud, it hit me. I started using these drill bushings because it was awkward measuring the triangular shape of the old pins. I chose a .250 bushing and a .251 bushing because that was what was available. See the issue? Using these bushings I know my pins are between .25 and .251. It also means my pins are always going to end up being oversized compared to my design. Whoops. I guess I should design things to the middle of this tolerance range? Maybe I should just measure my pins and see how much they're oversized. Oh, that's not between 0.25 and 0.251. It is 0.251. Whoops. I guess the tolerances of the bushings do matter. If only I could measure this inside diameter though. That's just impossible though. Wait. Wait a minute, I'm not making a triangle anymore. I can't just measure this inner diameter. Okay, that shouldn't have taken me so long to realize. Now I can actually tell how much the inner geometry is oversized. Let's just get rid of these drill bushings for now and make the design the way it was and make some pins and just make sure everything is exactly the size it should be. Finally, I was able to make another handle and got the behavior I wanted. A good fit with both a gauge pin and with my pin. But the next size up pin won't go, which is good. You can see better on the finished handle that there's not a lot of play, but nothing is getting stuck either. I was able to get three more good handles fairly quickly. Let's make some blades. I tried ordering some AEBL with the hopes that it would come in already at the correct thickness. It wasn't. And it wasn't very square either. So I'll have to clean up every side. Uh, 
I got a fresh palette to try another method of making blades. Now I'll try getting the steel to the right thickness. It's a pretty good finish. Next, I could make the inside geometry. I made sure my pins fit correctly. Next, I can move the blank to cut away the outside. I realized I should have milled a flat area into the fixture. So I did and adjusted everything in Fusion. I tried to be very thorough on deburring with this one. I even flip it again and deburred stuff I couldn't get in the first stop. I wanted to try roughing the bevel after heat treat. I want to work on getting better at making things flat before I can start purposefully putting bend into the blades for scissors. Let's just assemble what we have to make sure this design actually works. If it doesn't turn out to be a disaster, I'll heat treat it and anodize it later. Let's try magnets this time. I added a hole to make them easier to remove. It took a little time for them to wear in, but then they started working pretty good. I had to grind the tabs a little bit for them to be able to close. But this time I made sure the neck directions were milled to the right size so they can actually close properly. There are still some issues though. I shouldn't have to bird the bottom of the blade so much. That's gonna make it awkward when I add the bevel and try to sharpen them. One thing I didn't consider properly is that the square pin can fit through the groove in the blades. This means the button can be pressed when the scissors are open, which would cause a jam, but the locking part of the groove is too small and can just be forced past. This isn't entirely the fault of the new design though. When my blue scissors were clicking, I thought it was because the pin was getting caught somewhere in the groove. So I added extra clearance. But then we figured out what the real problem was last episode. If I remove that extra clearance, it'll help. So which scissors are better? Right now, it's a little hard to say. There's a bit more I have to tune with this new design, but I feel like it has many advantages that make that tuning worth trying. Some advantages I didn't even realize until after I made the parts, like better accessibility to measure the pins. Doing this design really helped me figure out things about my last design. I've still got a lot to learn about tolerances, but I'm glad I can start dealing with problems that have already been solved instead of being worried my machine or brain isn't working. So, thanks for watching. See ya.